Hello and good afternoon everyone here in Tallinn and also online. Welcome to our Western Balkan Digital Security Session in Tallinn Digital Summit. Why we have asked you to join this, this session and why this topic is important not only for Western Balkans but also globally. We truly believe that security, cybersecurity issues in Western Balkans are very relevant globally to each and every region and most of the countries. So democratic processes in Western Balkans, as elsewhere in the world, are growingly relying on various digital systems, and these systems are becoming the targets of various malicious cyber influence attacks. And also democracy, transparency, and internet freedom have suffered setbacks globally as a result of Russia's war against Ukraine and amplified by pandemic and economic hardships. So repeated high-profile cyber attacks over the course of past years across the Western Balkans highlight the need for the organized approach of cybersecurity, both in Western Balkans but also globally. And the European Union has significantly stepped up its cooperation with the Western Balkan partners in the area of cybersecurity capacity building. This discussion today is outcome of a project, uh, Cybersecurity Rapid Response for Albania, Montenegro and North Macedonia, financed by Service of Foreign Policy Instruments of European Commission. And the project is implemented by the eGovernance Academy, and the project is running from August 2022 until end of this year. And uh, the task of the project is strengthening the cybersecurity governance, operational capacities and the infrastructure in those three countries. Spotlighting this EU-supported cybersecurity rapid response measures in Albania, Montenegro and North Macedonia, we'd like to focus in this session on cyber resilience. It has become an important focus on crisis response in the Western Balkans and an aspect of strengthened uh, international cooperation. And also in this session, we will explore some major achievements of EU-funded support in this field so far, the pressing challenges and priorities, and discuss also how to further strengthen the democracy throughout the technology. So what will happen today is that um, after me, I ask for, uh, to the stage Peter Wagner, who is director in the Service of Foreign Policy Instrument in European Commission, to provide a keynote. And the second keynote will be from uh, Maras Dukai, Minister of Public Administration of Montenegro. And after those two keynotes, we will have a panel discussion moderated by EGA um, program director Merle Maigre, and Merle will already later present the participants of her panel. So I hope we are ready for the session. Um, we are happy to also receive your questions in the panel, so be active, both here and online. So I wish you a wonderful discussion, good keynotes and active discussion. Thank you very much. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, colleagues, thank you very much for being here. Um, it's a big honor for me uh, to be here to talk to those who have actually been doing the project. We've just been providing funding and of course we have, my colleagues have tried to help shaping it. I think the fact that this is this afternoon the only, if I understand it well, geographic session in a whole set of horizontal uh, sessions and uh, discussions shows already the importance of what we are going to talk about. That has, of course, a strong regional dimension because the countries which are going to present their work have themselves been, and especially Albania and uh, Montenegro, in 2022, the, the 
target of cyber attacks of, in some cases, unprecedented, even at a global level, uh, size. In the European Commission, when asked to uh, come in in support of these countries, we tried to very quickly mobilize some of our instruments which we have available for targeted and fast reaction, and we designed together with the partners a project called Cybersecurity Rapid Response for Albania, Montenegro and North Macedonia. North Macedonia. Now, this is a stream of funding that we are using very often in crisis context, um, but it always depends on having a good partner. And I must say, in this case, we were happy to see that uh, the Estonian e-governance academy was available and interested in the implementation, because here we have a partner with whom we've been working in other highly problematic and challenging contexts and have very, very trustful and good cooperation. That helped us to do what is really important in such a situation, to be as fast as a public administration, with all the apologies, uh, can be. The approach that has guided our project from the beginning was one where we really tried with the partners together to identify the respective needs, which were not always the same across the countries. The challenges look identical, but in each of the countries you have a different governance, legal, specific other situation, specific need. And that's what we tried to address. The project tried to address, I mentioned it quickly, but also very targeted the main issues. And this included, by the way, uh, also that we did not only provide hands-on support and training, etc., but also equipment material, which is also not always the easiest in such situations to do that rapidly. And we're very grateful for all the participants that we managed to do that. Ladies and gentlemen, there's very often in these discussions the question, but what's the public sector role in that and what are you doing here and why are you having to intervene? And I think the last few years particularly have demonstrated how crucial it is. Uh, the countries that are going to discuss and present the cases for sure, but you also know what happened in Ukraine, what happened in other parts of the Western Balkan, what happened in some member states over the last 5, 10, 12 years. And that is something that is not just protecting and working on public infrastructure, on administrations, but also understanding that this protection is at the same time a protection and necessary for critical infrastructure. Critical infrastructure that our industries need. My personal involvement that I found the most interesting in that respect in the fast, last five years, having worked on Ukraine and a number of other challenges, was, by the way, during the uh, COVID crisis, where we saw, vac uh, where we saw uh, vaccine producers that got under enormous uh, attacks, something that was not really a topic of discussions, and fortunately, we could, they all got well through that. So we have, as a European Union, and, and, and uh, Commissioner Breton made this point also this morning, we have a strong record, track record in working with also the public and the private sector in providing legislation and working on the whole range of issues. What we did, and that's where I try to uh, not preempt too much what probably the speakers afterwards will say, is we tried to really support hands-on our partners in tackling the challenges. And here we had a big advantage that the countries we were working with, as I said, North Macedonia, Montenegro and Albania, are very well-established partners for us, partners with whom we had already before a quite trustworthy uh, relationship and who had in the respective countries a very high level of engagement and of committed colleagues working on the topics. And this is, if you look at the, the, the broader picture, this is why you really see a kind of a seamless uh, success story there, despite all the heavy hits that were taken, that go from, let's say, high-level political declarations between the EU and the Western Balkans to the very close technical cooperation at working level between the experts, and that helped us to really cover all the uh, elements that were needed. The technical agencies, the ministries uh, in charge of cybersecurity were our main interlocutors. But our approach is always in such cases all government 
encompassing. Because you need, for example, very often legislation, the right regulatory framework, and that is not only one ministry that can provide it, and you have to go further. But you also have to start looking together with the public administrations in the countries, as I mentioned it already, critical infrastructure, telecommunications, energy, financial transactions, etc. All these institutions have to be able to communicate, to interact also in times of crisis and, and of attacks. I also would like to mention here two more parts that are often overlooked as side effects. So at the same time, they're looked at at individual level very much. The first one is elections. Uh, very often in this context of what we are doing here, we are preparing the ground for ensuring that in the countries under attack, in the medium, longer term, credible elections can still be held. An election is not something that happens on election days and then you have to make sure that some computers and some networks function. It is something that is much wider, that is much more uh, encompassing. And in uh, Montenegro this year, uh, in the context of the presidential and national legislative elections, the project supported in the end then really the Ministry of the Public Administration, but also the Ministry of the Interior and the Foreign Affairs Ministry to manage all these uh, threats that were happening, by the way, in reality. There's the second part, as I said, something that is sometimes forgotten when we talk cyber. Cyber is very often going hand in hand with disinformation, manipulation of information threats. That as well, I think we could observe in the countries, that's something that we can observe elsewhere. And Nelly, and, uh, apologies, Merle and I, we met for the first time when such a topic was rolled out by the uh, EGA colleagues in Ukraine. Uh, in a pre-war context, but already in the context of enormous pressure and high uh, level of threats. Ladies and gentlemen, as I said, uh, the cybersecurity has become increasingly an area of competition, of vulnerability really at a strategic level. It's not just about the functioning of one government process, it's the question of governance at all, at a, as a whole in a country that can be at uh, stake. And it is, of course, something that is in the multinational, increasingly connected, interconnected world, also of a global importance, how things are going. Therefore, I think uh, today, where each and every uh, conflict we are having has a cyber component, it is important and I'm very grateful that we can exchange here with uh, people who have gone through that work, not in a theoretical manner, but really in real life, sometimes under real threats, under real attacks. And I therefore wish us all that we uh, learn a lot for future program generation speed with these countries speed elsewhere in the world because there's one case the service that I'm heading is globally active that I am telling everybody at the moment when I'm running around and begging for money and that is the topics of cyber crime cyber attack and the topic of disinformation is coming as a request for support from each and every EU ambassador that is contacting us from wherever in the world. It's in Asia, it's in Central Asia, it's in Europe, it's in the wider Europe, uh, it's in Africa, of course, uh, it's across the world. Thank you very much. I got a tail. <coughs> um, thank you very much, Peter, for this... Um, this keynote and uh, I think the main takeaways is that EU is happy to support like-minded countries who are under attack and not only with a high level political dialogue but very practical support, rapid support in technical level. And also another important takeaway is that we don't need only protect the cyberspace, ICT system, online services but also critical infrastructure, electricity, gas networks, banking, telecom, supermarkets. So to, to make sure that the life goes on in the country. And about the elections, I think this is also very important. Uh, note that, uh, that the elections should be, should be, so to say, doable also, even if there is a high level um, and a strong uh, cyber attack is ongoing, but this is what we can discuss in the panel. Um, now moving to the next keynote. Uh, the next keynote is uh, 
Minister of Public Administration of Montenegro, Mr. Maras Dukai. And we are really happy to hear from you the key achievements in Montenegro on, on, on cyber, um, uh, uh, cyberspace because you had really strong uh, uh, cyber attacks in 2022. So we are, we are happy to, to learn more and, and I hope you can share openly what actually happens and how you actually dealt with it. Thank you very much, Minister Florizios. Thank you, uh, ladies and gentlemen. The digital transformation of our countries is one of the key priorities that our governments aspire to because it enables the availability of public administration to our citizens and the economy. The development of uh, electronic services is this regard in activity to which we pay full attention. A prerequisite that needs to be met in this demanding process is ensuring cybersecurity in order to keep communication uh, safe. It is my pleasure to have the opportunity to discuss right here in uh, Estonia, which is a leader in the field of digitalization and uh, cyber security, about cyber security and progress challenges and uh, needs in achieving resilience, cyberspace together with all of you. These are issues at, uh, of utmost importance that affect every country in this interconnected world. It is crucial that we all recognize the significance of this topic uh, and invest greater collective efforts to ensure a secure digital environment for our societies. In the pursuit of a resilience, cyberspace it is essential that we recognize the proactive steps taken by our countries and share best practice among us. In August in last year, Montenegro saved the largest cyber attack on the government IT infrastructure. The cyber attack has shown us that we need a strong cybersecurity ecosystem and therefore the Ministry of Public Administration is taking all the necessary steps and planning mechanisms for a safe cyberspace in Montenegro. Initially, we started by improving and changing the regulatory framework and developed a new law on cyber security that is aligned with the NIST 2 directive in our former efforts to create resilient cyberspace. The government of Montenegro is establishing the Cyber Security Agency. This forward thinking initiative reflects our commitment to protecting um, our digital infrastructure safeguarding our citizens and fostering an uh, environment conducive uh, to innovation and economic growth. Of expansion importance was uh, establishing the government SEER team with the function of operational monitoring and protection of the network of the state bodies and uh, government infrastructure 24-7 uh, regime. We are aware of the fact that we have to strengthen this team, which will happen with the future agency for uh, cyber security and institutional response to the challenge of uh, cyber uh, security. In the moment, uh, facing international cooperation as well 
Astle, dedication of friendly countries, let this let solidarity show by our partners was of crucial importance. On this occasion, I express my special gratitude to the EU. Let this support we decide through the cyber rapid response project implemented by EGA. At the difficult time for Montenegro, this uh, was on the most important and effective support mechanisms. And I particularly pleased um, at the line, Minister, that we continue to successfully implement uh, this uh, project. I'm especially pleased that we will have the opportunity to continue the excellent cooperation with EJA uh, in framework of the Cyber Balkan Protect in upcoming years. The government of Montenegro has been intensively working on strengthening regional and international cooperation in the field of cybersecurity. In this regard, we proudly highlight our collaboration with France and Slovenia and the establishment of the regional cyber security center based in Podgorica. Montenegro's membership in the management board of the regional cyber security center not only emphasizes our commitment to regional cooperation, but also underscores, underscores the importance uh, of collective action in address, addressing uh, the constantly evolving uh, cyber threats. It is uh, envisioned that the center will be an education center for the entire region in order to create a critical mass of cyber security experts. The establishment of the Cyber Security Agency of Montenegro membership in the management board of the regional uh, cyber security center. Uh, exemplify or dedication to building a resilient cyberspace. However, it is not limited to listen. We are working on improving our critical infrastructure, enhancing the resilience of our government system and providing a secure uh, network for all institutions. Considering uh, the challenges we face and the evolving nature of cyber attacks, regional and international cooperation plays a crucial role in coming them. The government of Montenegro has been intensively working on strengthening regional and international cooperation in the field of cyber security. An uh, additional benefit for Montenegro is the ongoing communication with EU Agency for Cybersecurity, ENISA, with whom we uh, have established cooperation during my visit in uh, Brussels in March uh, this year. We are focused to ensure readiness and resilience to respond to cyber threats and incidents we proved to be the biggest challenge. By investing in the development of our cybersecurity work phase and promoting a culture of cybersecurity events, we aim to improve the overall readiness and resilience of the Western Balkan to deal with cyber uh, threats. In the regard, we feel that in our efforts to have more resilient cyber ecosystem, closer regional cooperation to have a special place in all of our discussions. Montenegro will welcome new ideas to improve our regional in cybersecurity as well as next steps in bringing uh, closer our economies. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Minister Maras Dukai, for those insights. And I think. Um, Three key takeaways or lessons, what you mentioned is that uh, regulations should be updated also dur already during peaceful times because when it's clear who is responsible for what and who, who is doing what. 
Secondly, strong institutions, as you mentioned, that cybersecurity agency was established after the attacks. So, so institu institutionalization of um, activities, so clear roles uh, inside the institutions and dedicated staff. And last but not least, regional cooperation. It's really important because most probably the same attacks what is happening today with you will happen tomorrow with your neighbors or happened yesterday already with your neighbors. So, um, so really great takeaways and very many thanks for those with very open insights. We're going to continue with um, a panel discussion and I'm happy to invite uh, to the stage my dear colleague from <coughs> EGA, Program Director of Cybersecurity, Merle Maigrand, and please present also your, your panelists. I think it will be a really wonderful panel. Thank you. Good afternoon to everybody. My name is Merle Maigre, indeed, I am the uh, Program Director of Cybersecurity at eGovernance Academy and it is a great pleasure of mine to lead today this discussion on the cyber resilience of democratic processes. True, we focus on the region of Western Balkans, but I think the discussion uh, has relevance uh, for the wider area because the problems that we are tackling uh, uh, that are related to cyber resilience and election cybersecurity are not unique uh, for the Western Balkans, but are more general. So it is of utmost pleasure of mine to invite uh, in this discussion to join me on the uh, on on the panel, uh, good friend Dusan Polovic, head of the cybersecurity department of uh, the Ministry of Public Administration of Montenegro. Thank you, Dusan, for being here in Tallinn with us. Hi, Merle. Hi. Um, Professor Igli Tafa, the National Cybersecurity Coordinator in Albania. And uh, last but not least, um, Dr. Preet Winkel, a good friend and colleague from the eGovernance Academy, but also the former head of the Estonian State Electoral Office. Uh, we uh, uh, were planning on also having Dr. Azir Aliu, uh, the uh, Minister of Information Society and Administration from North Macedonia, but unfortunately he's being caught up in the meeting uh, with his Prime Minister and the Estonian Prime Minister. It seems that the discussion of theirs is so uh, engaging that, uh, that uh, he will not be able to make it to the panel or maybe towards the end. But nevertheless, I'm really proud to have this, these fine gentlemen here to discuss uh, what is really important. Uh, for starters, I'm stating the uh, basic and obvious, yet very important. Elections are touching a core moment of the citizen's life in democracy. Uh, voting during elections is really at the heart of democracy. Um, you probably all know that, but I think it's important to establish this at, at the beginning. Um, securing free and fair elections in the one person, one vote principle is a fundamental pillar of a functioning democracy. So, um, uh, as we are tackling issues related to this, the Western Balkans, as I said, is not alone, uh, but democratic processes in the Western Balkans as elsewhere in the world are growingly, as they are growingly relying on various digital services, these services are also growingly being, becoming targets of various cyber attacks. Um, cyber attacks, both technical, influence attacks, and sometimes also the good old uh, analog um, uh, threats and risks. Um, this panel discusses these challenges, uh, how to conduct secure elections in the digital area, era, what are the measures, uh, what kind of measures can we build in cyber resilience, um, 
uh, throughout the democratic processes. One thing is sure, the matter is not technical merely, but is, uh, it definitely covers wider area. So perhaps, uh, Preet, I would first turn to you as a uh, Part of this project we, uh, that was funded by the uh, European Commission, we um, published a freshly minted report on uh, election cybersecurity um, that identified the challenges of cyber resilience and also uh, comes up with some of the recommendations. Preet, perhaps uh, to get us going, could you share some of the findings, uh, key findings from the report that you got, just got published, so that those who are interested could uh, grab a copy and, and uh, hear why is it that uh, this is relevant? Great, thank you, Merle, and um, thank you for all your interest in, in this topic, because this is important. Elections are important, although, as Merle already said, uh, it's not important how much of a digitally run elections you have. All the election, let's say, processes that precede the election day and uh, then that come after the election day, more or less already in our societies have to do with technology and are in the risk of, uh, well, at least in, in, in some way, in the risk uh, of, of some uh, adverse actions. So, indeed, this uh, uh, report was, uh, was done uh, uh, based on, on, on this um, uh, rapid uh, uh, project, but uh, I would actually steer away a bit from the actual fact that it was made based on the uh, very good cooperation uh, of the Montenegrin government and, and other uh, stakeholders in, in the country, because most uh, or, or even all the, um, let's say, outcomes of this report are more or less universal. Because what actually are the important, let's say, pillars of uh, uh, resilience uh, in, uh, in any system? There are three of them, I, I, I would uh, uh, more or less say them. There's uh, coordination and cooperation, it's human resources, and then technology. So, the more important than even technology is actually the human resource and how this human resource is actually communicating and coordinating in between each other. So for that reason, the, the main outcomes or the risks we actually uh, got from, uh, uh, from this process mainly come from the uh, need for better coordination, the need for, for better, uh, let's say, better networking in between the different stakeholders in the country and getting uh, the, the most out of it, in, in especially in a setting that is in a small country. Uh, Montenegro is a small country, Estonia is a small country. There's a lot of small countries that need to get more out of this fact that cooperation is key. Uh, in, in Estonia, the network model of uh, during elections is uh, the most important factor to actually adhere to that different government institutions and uh, stakeholders also outside the other government cooperate during uh, uh, that very critical time and very important time in, 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 the, uh, in the society. So I think that's important uh, to, uh, to reiterate here. Uh, also that the, the need for the um, awareness raising and, and the need for cyber hygiene and, and, and cyber awareness raising of, of the wider public but also the, uh, the officials is crucial that there needs to be understanding of the risks and there needs to be understanding what kind of mitigation measures there are to actually mitigate those risks. And when you come to technology, yes, technology always uh, should come, and at least uh, I firmly believe that technology is only as good as the person or the people who actually are using this or uh, uh, making the, the technology useful, uh, that there need to be um, uh, better understanding of the legacy problem that uh, there's in very uh, many occasions that the, the, the technology solutions that they are need to be constantly upgraded, constantly patched and, and understood that, that there are risks uh, uh, tied to the fact that maybe something that was acquired uh, more uh, 
closely to 10 years ago might need some uh, more, let's say, uh, uh, patching and, uh, and, and more awareness of, of other risks that, that come with legacy software and, and, and some hardware solutions. So maybe these three uh, most important pillars uh, uh, that are not uh, specifically one country specific, but uh, go to a lot of other situations as well. Thank you, Breit. Uh, indeed, I think uh, someone just noted, uh, and I guess you would agree, that the elections cannot be more digital than the government exactly. uh, that they support. Um, but picking a little bit more, uh, and I admit this was the question I planned to ask the minister, but I would, I would ask this from you because as the former head of the uh, election, uh, election office, you, you probably are, are familiar with these topics as well. Um, what is the role of the government? What is the role of political parties? And what is the role of individual politicians in taking responsibility uh, to uh, guarantee that elections are conducted in a, in a secure and responsible way uh, in, in taking steps towards cyber resilience uh, throughout elections. What can be done um, on your experience? That's really a, an important question because the, the really traditional understanding is that the government organizes elections and that's it, that, that they are the main stakeholders without any other, let's say, important interlocutors uh, around this, but actually the, uh, the role of, of, the, of the parties, for example, and, and the candidates, uh, the individual candidates, is, is, is also very, very important that their uh, awareness of the risks and, and their also actions uh, during the campaign and during the, uh, the active election period is also crucial that if they are, um, let's say, they're running into some um, let's say, adverse actions uh, during the campaign period, that might uh, throw a very, very dark shadow on, on the, the whole process, on, on the whole, uh, um, let's say, campaign period as such. That's why, for example, in the Estonian case, uh, uh, for years now, uh, the, the government actually offers the opportunity for parties and individual candidates to check their IT systems and their um, possibility to to be sure, to verify that the, the systems they are using are, are actually safe and secure, so that uh, although they are not part of the official, let's say, election organization process, they are part of the ecosystem of elections. So that's why it's really important not to, um, uh, let's say, forget, forget those, uh, those uh, let's say, um, crucial parts uh, of the election ecosystem as well. Thank you, Brit, very much. What, of course, so that so as not to keep this just an inter-Estonian discussion, I would like to um, bring in uh, more voices from the panel. Dushan, um, um, would you perhaps, well, I mean, basically, as your minister very eloquently already explained to us uh, following the uh, August uh, last year cyber attacks in Montenegro, uh, where the national infrastructure was, was hit, most key stakeholders uh, in Montenegro have clearly become aware of the urgency of uh, improving national cybersecurity. And we from the Governance Academy have seen that through personal experience of interacting with you uh, and, and various, uh, various uh, agencies in Montenegro throughout the past year. Um, but, however, would you say are your key lessons learned from that, uh, from that crisis and perhaps um, as this report is about Montenegro could you share some of the your comments or reactions uh, about the report yes Please. thank you thank you Merle uh, I'm just listening uh, Preet uh, uh, what he said about the, the, the uh, election in Montenegro and the cyber uh, issue with with uh, uh, election systems, and I mostly agree with uh, with him. And I want to emphasize uh, uh, the several uh, main uh, issues. Uh, most of them he mentioned. Uh, first of all, it's uh, cyber hygiene, which is uh, I think uh, really uh, important, and uh, uh, also the, the the raising awareness is uh, uh, very important. Uh, 
uh, not even in the case of the of the cyber issue in an uh, election campaign, uh, I would like to remark the networking uh, between the inst institution, which is also so crucial. Uh, we, ha uh, we, we faced, uh, as we said, with the, with the huge and uh, uh, massive attack on the, our government infrastructure and uh, our network. And uh, in these days, uh, the networking between institutions was one of the most important uh, uh, things. Uh, and uh, also, I would like uh, to say that uh, the, the international cooperation uh, in in this period was also also something what we uh, really need and uh, uh, back to the the election back to the the election campaign uh, topic uh, in the previous period in the montenegro every election uh, has this uh, uh, were a campaign with uh, some uh, cyber uh, attacks, but not only cyber. It was uh, also the hybrid hybrid threats. Uh, uh, also, uh, disinformation uh, is uh, something what we always has in uh, in this in this period. So, uh, and after this uh, last year uh, in August cyber attack, we have a. Uh, Two election campaign in our country. It was an uh, election campaign for the president of Montenegro and a parliamentary election campaign. And uh, through this period, we have increase of the increased number of uh, cyber uh, cyber attacks on our infrastructure. Uh, but uh, because we learned some lessons from the period of the August of last year, uh, we have. Uh, um, we have an uh, appropriate uh, response for, for this attack, but uh, we believe that uh, we must work, uh, we need to work uh, uh, much, much more in the, and to invest more in the, in the cyber res resilience in, in, in our country. Thank you. Um, could you perhaps outline from the um, activities that have been particularly um, uh, focusing on uh, election, uh, election security, cybersecurity, capacity building. Um, what do you think was particularly relevant uh, and, uh, and useful? Yeah, I, 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 I would like to, to express my help for, for uh, support what we have uh, first uh, through the Cyber Rapid Response Project. Uh, by a European Union, which is uh, implementing by EGA, and uh, it was very uh, useful that we first time that was first time that we have uh, in Montenegro uh, uh, expert which dealing with the cyber uh, in uh, election campaign, uh, and uh, uh, I, I think uh, that. Uh, that is uh, exchanging uh, experience uh, with these experts help us to uh, improve our resilience. But also, uh, I am very, I am very pleased because of this little book, this uh, report of what we have from uh, Preet and from uh, EGA, and uh, we need to uh, uh, listen uh, to to read it very carefully and to. Uh, prioritize because I saw in the, the, this report uh, the different uh, category and different uh, priority and the, uh, with the with the risk. Uh, so we we need um, to to improve our resilience uh, uh, to use this report, uh, uh, which could uh, show us uh, how we need to to work in in uh, upcoming not uh, months. I, I would like to say in upcoming days. Right. Well, Italy now turning to you and turning to Albania. Also, since last summer, Albania saw unprecedented cyber attacks to their infrastructure directly linked to national foreign policy. Uh, the outcome of these attacks included diplomatic action that had never been seen before or linked before with, uh, with cyber security related uh, um, activities. So, uh, 
nevertheless, it's, it's really a true pleasure to see that after the attacks, the Albanian government has really undertook, taken a number of measures uh, to address some of the key uh, issues. And we, from the part of the Governance Academy, have, uh, have definitely observed a significant progress. Uh, could you perhaps share with us some of the ingredients of, of that progress and some of the area that I think is, is relevant uh, more broadly uh, where you um, perhaps can, can share some, uh, some wisdom with the audience is the interagency cooperation. Interagency cooperation I think is absolutely key uh, in cyber resilience. Um, you need to cooperate with others. Uh, you need to understand who are your partners and allies in crisis. Um, it's useful to think out, think through uh, how can government and industry work better together and whether the current cooperation mechanisms are sufficient and working. Um, could you perhaps share with us some of uh, some of the um, some of, of some of the aspects of that field from Albania? Thank you very much, first of all, for having me. It's my pleasure being here. And uh, yes, in fact, uh, we have had uh, a very severe attacks, uh, which started uh, since last year, from uh, the middle of uh, the July. And uh, the attacks uh, uh, carry on uh, since that day. And uh, uh, due to this situation, we were forced to uh, switch swiftly in order to uh, be resilient against one actor which, is, uh, which originated not from uh, uh, any group, criminal group, but from one state, which definitely end up in uh, cutting the diplomatic relationship with uh, uh, that uh, state in order to uh, let's say, uh, blame, blame them or blame it for attacking uh, an, uh, uh, in unprovoked way our country. So the attack was very severe. But uh, before I discuss for attack, I want to stress out that uh, the Albanian government has a very high focus in digitalization. Not now, but a uh, few years ago, we have uh, started a very... Uh, deeply and long process for digitalization of public services which are located in uh, one agency called National Agency Information Society. So the reason why we have been attacked is because we have digitalized more than 95-96% of the public services in, uh, which are uh, hosted in this uh, hub, in this center. So it was very attractive for them to attack us, even though that they didn't reach, they didn't have success. So, but anyhow, uh, we had the series of attacks carries on, carried on with uh, Albania State Police and some other energy sector with uh, uh, some other sectors, uh, and end up in financial sectors. So uh, the goal was very clear to paralyze our infrastructure and to create a panic. At a cyber attack, in fact, it's not only technology, but even uh, is a hybrid because uh, they use even the media to create the panic toward the people, especially when they refer to financial sector. So definitely, we understood that cybersecurity should be more closed with digital transformation. We are, we are in the digital transformation age, digital transformation epoch, but we understood that we have to invest more in cybersecurity. And in, at this regard, we reconcile, recompose the whole cybersecurity structure a national authority for cybersecurity, which is responsible for imposing the cybersecurity to all critical infrastructure. The first thing that we did is that we tried to share and, or let's say, to 
empower the trust between the critical infrastructures and national cybersecurity and government. And then we extend the number of critical infrastructures, which before the attack was roughly 100, and now we, are, we have 500, which cover not only governance, but it is extends to the financial sector, to energy, to transport, to healthcare, to education, to uh, media, to independent agencies. So it's a big scope. And in this regard, we try to uh, do proactive and reactive actions. More concretely, after we frequently create a calendar for meeting all the critical infrastructure in order to know each other much better because we know very good that if we know each other, it's much, it is much easier to share the problem with each other. It's much easier to share the issue. If we are isolated, for sure we cannot share the problem. So we understood and we try to dissolve the walls between the critical infrastructure or economic operators and nation cybersecurity authority. And next step is that we started to set up laboratories for uh, proactive and reactive uh, uh, activities, which belongs to a threat hunters group. We create a threat hunters group, which analyze threats, uh, red team groups, which uh, check the vulnerability. We create a group for uh, forensics investigation, reactive, uh, for risk assessment. And more, more concretely, we understood that we should empower the network, especially with our strategic partners, such as US and European Union. Definitely, I want to thank uh, EGA for support especially in the capacity building, uh, because if you want to go further, you have to invest in, in the brain, and so you understood very good, and you help us in this re, uh, line, in this uh, directions, and along with it, we understood that we should set up, beside the strategic plan and risk assessment, we should invest in operational plan and technical plan in order to react in a short term against adversity. I might say that now we are much stronger, but still, I guess that as every Balkan country, we are very small countries, we have limited resources, and uh, limited resources started with the budget. We uh, immediately understood that the demands for investing in cybersecurity is very high, while the opportunity to react and to uh, be resilient against adversity is uh, very low. So this gap needs to be uh, dissolved as much as we can, and day by day we are working on it. So our demands, we know where is the target, we know where is the ex what we expect to, and we know our what we have, uh, let's say, uh, what, what are our, our opportunities. But finally, I want to stress out that alone, we cannot do that. We cannot be resilient. Cybersecurity is a global vision, so this forum is for sure very important, and... Uh, the, the collaboration of we, um, among Western Balkan with each other and, of course, in the sun of European Union and US will serve and will help us in order to be more resilient. For sure, this is a war and uh, it will last long because it just started. Balkan is very attractive, unfortunately. Every country is attractive, in fact, but Balkan, I don't know why, is very attractive <laughs> for uh, uh, some uh, enemy countries. So I guess that uh, if we do not take the concrete steps and if we stay alone, even though that we might have different 
let's say, a history or different background. But in the cyber, we have the one common issue that to be together in order to be resilient. Very good. Uh, concrete steps uh, and taking concrete steps is something that we like very much here in Estonia. We are very concrete. So building on what you said, uh, what could be some of the concrete steps? And, and this is a question perhaps both to you, Igli, and to you, Dushan. Uh, what could you propose? Uh, some, say, top three steps to take towards better regional cooperation in cybersecurity um, in the Western Balkans? Uh, yeah, we, we, we share the um, same issue uh, in, in uh, our region. It's, uh, some of them are coming from the, uh, maybe because our economy has no develop appropriate and uh, uh, in previous period we did not finance uh, uh, our cy cyber defense in, in, in our country. So uh, when we put uh, some uh, uh, keynotes and, uh, and focus, I would like to say that one of the most important thing is uh, uh, education. Education, knowledge and experience. Uh, um, when, we, when we face this, uh, with this um, massive attack in the last, last year, uh, we do not have a, enough experience for counter uh, strike with this attack. Uh, uh, we don't have uh, a enough knowledge, of course. Uh, we have, uh, uh, let's say, we have support from your project, uh, Cyber Rapid Response. And as you know, uh, we organize uh, 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 several trainings and workshops f uh, for not only for uh, employees of uh, uh, government cert and. Uh, B uh, even for all agency in, in our country and also in uh, regional country. And uh, it was a really a uh, great experience to share our knowledge with, with our colleagues from, from, from the region. And because, uh, as you know, we have an attack in the August of last year and our colleagues in Albania also have attack maybe one uh, or two months uh, before us. And... Uh, in that in that time, we did not uh, uh, we did not uh, share enough in information between uh, our two states. Uh, uh, but uh, we must uh, we must make a, a better uh, better cooperation collaboration between uh, regional states uh, because we can uh, use uh, uh, our experience and uh, our resources because we. we we do not have uh, too much resources in, in, in our uh, countries. So uh, I believe that, that uh, we need to work on, uh, let's say, on cyber uh, forming uh, a cyber rapid response teams, regional teams, uh, who can uh, share uh, resources for every uh, country in the region. I think that idea is, is uh, could be very, very useful for all of uh, our countries. Excellent idea. Igli, would you have something to add? Yes, thank you. Uh, I can uh, say that uh, uh, we, as a Western Balkan, might, I might highlight five topics or five pillars that we should move and we should uh, go through it. The first one is, as my colleague mentioned, is we have to share the knowledge with each other by starting with threats, vulnerabilities. More concretely, some second level banks which operate in Albania at the same time have the branches to Montenegro or vice versa or Macedonia. So it means that if the bank in Montenegro has been attacked, sooner or later it will be attacked, this bank in Albania. So by sharing threats, it means that by sharing the PPT, uh, sorry, uh, TTP, technical, tactical and uh, uh, procedures that the enemy is using, we might be in advance, more resilience against adversity. So the first is sharing. Sharing by sharing threats, sharing vulnerabilities, 
and sharing experience, which means that the experts in Montenegro, Macedonia, uh, Serbia, Bosnia, Kosovo can create the, that form which I, we might call cyber coalition. Uh, this might be the second pillar. Sec cyber coalition means that to have a calendar in which we schedule the meetings and sharing workshop, organize workshop and so on in order to share the knowledge and the problems with each other. The third is the support for capacity building. Uh, I might congrat the Montenegro for the, uh, which uh, is uh, very, uh, which is in the, in, in, in the uh, much forward than, than Albania because they have built up the Cyber Academia in the, the collaboration with the European Union. And I guess that Cyber Academia is something that you might go further because you invest in the brain. Only in Albania, for example, this year, we need more than 700, 700, 700 experts because the new cyber law imposes all the economic operators to have at least three experts. So we need, a, this is a big gap, even for big countries. Imagine we can realize what's going on in a small country. So we have to think about how to find this capacity, how to find this, these peoples. So maybe we together we can discuss for capacity building, not only with experts, but we, they can penetrate in the curricula of universities, in research, in laboratory, even uh, more in a high schools, and in order to have a prospective security cyber ecosystem to extend in elementary school as Israeli model. This is the third. The fourth is all the Western Balkan should be in the projects of cybersecurity which are launched from a European Union. Uh, Western Balkan country could not be excluded because cybersecurity is the global vision. Of course, every country has its own task to do in order to be more, as much as it can, there is uh, compliance with European Union directive. But as far as I know, uh, for example, Albania has a very good and in compliance, fully compliance with NIS2 directive. I guess even the Montenegro, uh, my colleague might uh, admit it, has, uh, has done a very good progress and uh, so we are in fully compliance with NIS2 directive. So since we are fully compliance with NIS, uh, NIS2 directive in cybersecurity law, in, a, in, a, in a trusted service law, in methodology in which we classify critical and important infrastructures, uh, we should be part of European Union uh, uh, organizations and then we should get beneficiary from EU project. This is the fourth and the fifth is the cyber diplomacy. Uh, we should have one voice when we talk to European Union. We, I know very good that Albanian are, let's say, have a different background with the rest of Western Balkan because most of them are Slavic and we are not Slavic, but when we reach to, yeah, for sure, but when we reach to the cyber security, we are Western Balkan, and when we reach how we can collaborate with European Union and West and the uh, US, we should delete the rest of the countries, which are not guests or which are not very friendly with, with uh, uh, us, but we should see only one light which originated from European Union and from US. And so we should have, of course, it's beyond me and beyond my colleagues, but uh, I, I'm, I'm sure that in the moment that we want to uh, be in the same line with the directive of European Union, we have to forget some other countries and to focus in uh, directives and the, the politics and the uh, 
regulatory of uh, European Union and the US. So cyber diplomacy should be, uh, for me, the fifth column that need to be upgraded, improved between Western Balkan in order to have one voice, one uh, attitude with uh, our partners. Thank you. Very nice. Uh, Preet, I, I will let you uh, comment and I would then uh, really like to open the uh, uh, panel up, uh, the, the, uh, open up for questions from the audience. So if anybody has a question, feel free to already signal so we can have the microphone coming to you. But Preet, please. Yes, really quickly, I just wanted to reiterate something that has been mentioned, but really just to, to let it uh, uh, shine a bit more. Uh, it's about planning and risk uh, evaluations. Uh, that that's really something that has to be uh, much more not only in, in the Western Balkan region but everywhere. That uh, risk aversion and, and, and planning before planning beforehand is, is really something that needs to be that that there's much let's say reactivity currently. So that if something happens, let's start let, let's scramble for for the solutions. But risk. Uh, uh, planning risk evaluations are then followed by drills and, and exercises which really prepare the, uh, the, the, the actual uh, cases that, that might uh, uh, come. And, and together with that, regular auditing, testing and, and plans for improvement really go hand in hand with that so that you, you have concrete plans that you, uh, you, 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 you get improved also in time, because that also needs budgeting, that needs time for, for preparations. So planning, 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 I think. Just wanted to reiterate that as well. Very wise. Thank you. Dushan, please. Yes, uh, I, uh, I have inspiration through the, 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 the uh, speech of uh, my colleague from Albania, Ili. Uh, so uh, let's say uh, the, the regional cooperation is so so crucial and so important uh, Igli have uh, explained five pillars uh, I, I, I want to emphasize this one about the education the reason why I mentioned educa education it's so important the trainings and uh, uh, as, as he mentioned we, we established the, uh, the uh, regional center for education for uh, uh, cyber crime uh, cyber uh, cyber uh, cyber security and uh, cyber diplomacy uh, which is uh, uh, is friends uh, initiative in Slovenia and Montenegro is based in, in Podgorica but the center is not uh, uh, form only for Montenegro and uh, it's a uh, expert center. in uh, Montenegro. It's it's a regional uh, center, and we believe that should become a, a, a regional hub for education for these three pillars. Uh, on example, I know that uh, that there is a lot of uh, progress in in Albania uh, that they are planning this, uh, a laboratory for uh, cyber security and. Uh, uh, every of these uh, of these countries should be uh, specialized from some of these pillars and uh, share uh, the share the, the the resources for for other countries. So I believe that that uh, the, the future of Western Balkan is uh, for sure in the uh, European Union, uh, but also. Uh, uh, we need to have a, a cyber resilience together to, to improve uh, together resilience in, in, in our region. Very good. Uh, I cannot agree more. And Just I know that you have you are full of good ideas, but I would really like huh. to bring the audience in here as well, so that we what we talk about here on the panel is more uh, responsive to to the questions. I saw Solza. You had a question. Perhaps you can present yourself and and yeah. uh, ask ask us. My name is Solza Kovacevska. Yeah. My name is Solza Kovacevska from North Macedonia. I, I had a one. One question for Mr. Taffa and also for the other panelists. Mr. Taffa, you said that digital transformation and cybersecurity go hand in hand. So Albanian model is centralized for the data and systems. You are having one data center which serves all institutions and with government cloud, as opposed to the decentralized model where different institutions hold their own systems and they exchange data using a secure system such as X-Road. So regarding cost savings, this is a good, better model. But regarding cybersecurity, 
is this a good approach? Because all the systems are using the same technology stack and they are concentrated in one place, so it makes it sweet target for ha hackers. So the question is, is the centralized model for data and services better option for regarding cyber resilience than the decentralized model? Thank you, yeah. very thorough. Yeah. Maybe, are there, are there any other questions perhaps? I see a hand up there. Uh, maybe we can gather a few and then uh, Come back. Yes, I see your hand up in the back and in the front here as well. Thank you, uh, Milan Sikorski, uh, EGA as well, but I'm also coming from the Balkans. So uh, I would kindly ask our panelists uh, from, from the Balkans, they've spoken really nicely about uh, the need for the regional cooperation. Uh, but I would like to ask them to be devil's advocates and to tell us when it comes to threat intelligence sharing concretely, especially around the elections, what are actually the obstacles for having that more and to turn that into around, around and tell us also where do you see the opportunities for more effective threat intelligence sharing, especially around the elections. And maybe a question, same question to Preet, to, to share with us maybe some of the good practices from Estonia around getting threat intelligence information from neighbors and partners uh, ahead of the elections. Very good. Uh, there was, yes, a hand up right behind you, uh, please. Hello, I'm Kimo Rosku from Finland, Finnish Digital Agency. Uh, one simple question, f uh, and f thank you for excellent discussion so far. So, uh, what kind of cyber exercises do you arrange? That's my question. Good, good question. And last but not least, uh, Dusan here, maybe you can present yourself and then we can come back to the panel. Yeah, sure. Hi. Uh, my name is Dusan Kirkutic and I'm a head of uh, government cert uh, within Montenegro. And my question is from Dr. Iglu. Uh, so, from what I read in a newspaper, uh, Albania actually uh, cut the diplomatic, this is what I read in the newspaper, diplomatic relationship from, uh, with the Iran due to the, contributed to the cyber attack. So, was there any uh, cyber diplomatic uh, measures taken in order to try to de-escalate the situation uh, with the country? Sorry? Uh, was there any like a cyber diplomatic uh, actions taken in order to try to de-escalate the situation prior to actually cutting the diplomatic relationship with the country? And the uh, second question is, again, something that I read in a newspaper, it's that uh, there were some IT administrators actually charged by the prosecutor in Albania uh, due to their negligence for updating the system. Uh, so if you can comment, I know you are not the prosecutor, but if you can comment about this, if you know anything about that, what was the conclusion to the case and uh, whether that's, that's actually true, because these are the information from the newspaper. Thank you. Well, thank you. Uh, it feels like eagerly uh, you've been put on the spot, but, uh, <laughs> uh, but I hope you don't mind because um, um, worse than being talked about is not being talked about. Uh, I, think, I think it's, well, please comment some of the questions. Uh. Yes. Thank you very much, everybody, for the question. Uh, I want just to add and something before I started the, the answer for each question, is that uh, uh, beside the proactive, uh, when I refer to cyber coalition, uh, beside the proactive actions, uh, very important is reactive action. So incident response should be uh, one of the topics that in which we can, we sh should collaborate together, because uh, both countries have the the common history. We had an incident with Gidecom in uh, uh, government and, uh, and in. Uh, uh, other sectors, and we try to recover by, uh, let's say, by our side. Of course, we, uh, the, the guys did a very excellent work, but uh, for sure it is important in the perspective to have the support and sh uh, collaboration even for incident response uh, uh, as, a, as a one team with a Western Balkan country and, of course, with the uh, European Union. Regarding the first question uh, about uh, if, it, if it is good or bad about the hybrid or central, or, uh, sorry, central or uh, uh, distributed uh, digital services. In fact, this is a very uh, a long debate. Uh, there are two philosophy, but uh, I guess that the cybersecurity is not affected if all the services are centralized, because uh, even though that in the first sight it might look that. Uh, if they are separated, uh, one attack affects only 
isolated service and doesn't affect to the rest, but in the perspective of manageable control, standard implementation, policy and policies and procedures, and countermeasures is more effective to have all of them in one center. I want to say, stress out that, in fact, uh, now we are thinking about that this is a hybrid form in which we have uh, uh, most of the services in on-prem and some other in cloud. And uh, uh, by uh, having an, even the business continuity plan with disaster recovery side, and by improving and empowering the technology, investment in technology, in standards, in uh, uh, approaches, people approaches technology and in people, for sure, uh, I'm, I, 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 I keen on to, 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 to have all the services in uh, one center and not to have, uh, let's say, uh, distributed. I consider is more eff efficient, especially in the uh, form of manageable. This, okay. is the first, this is the first answer that mm -hmm. uh, And then I there were to. specific I, I questions know. regarding the uh, cyber diplomacy and the latest news, I understand. On uh, yes, uh, uh, regarding to the cyber diplomacy, uh, in fact, uh, uh, we were forced to cut the relationship between uh, Albania, of course, and the uh, Islamic State of Iran because the attack was unprovoked uh, is, uh, in the middle of the day. We, have had, we haven't had any reason why to be uh, attacked in such, in such severe or to, in, in such sophisticated way. In such the attack was very orchestrated. And so we were forced to do that. Regarding to uh, the other action about the cyber diplomacy, I guess that we, I want to stress something, that we are 100% in the light and in the same step with US and European Union. So the rest for, for us uh, has not any, uh, and there's no doubt. Uh, the rest for us is, for, for me at least, uh, this it belongs not uh, uh, to me because it, uh, it's uh, for the government. So uh, others, let's say, reasons and uh, other uh, actions or what is behind this, uh, I cannot, uh, uh, unfortunately, I cannot give more information. Regarding to the persecu prosecutor office system, uh, we have uh, started a very deep digitalization and transformation system by reno uh, renovating uh, most of the uh, platforms and the systems that are in the public services. And as part of it, for sure, is a prosecutor office. So uh, we have more than 1,250 services, public services, only which belong to government. And uh, uh, they are not only renovated and renewed and uh, uh, modernized in order to be in compliance with technology, but we are integrated with artificial intelligence in order to be more convenient for, uh, for citizens. So I don't know if uh, I give oh, the answer. I think that was plenty. Thank you, Igli. Yeah, okay. Uh, for allowing rest, to, if you wish, for I other, other tools. No, no, the next perhaps, one is for uh, I, would, I would bring in Dushan okay. here and Preet perhaps also. Dushan, there was this question on the threat intel uh, sharing opportunities uh, between neighbors. Yes. What would you say? Yes, uh, I just want uh, to add uh, uh, just, just, just one, one comment about these uh, centralized of, or distributed uh, uh, solution. Uh, I agree with my, with my colleagues the, uh, uh, about the better approach from our point of view and because of our legal framework also is a centralized uh, solution. So uh, I, we, I agree with, with that. And also I would like to mention that we have a different kind of exercises and uh, uh, some of them are on the crisis management, some of them on uh, uh, risk, risk manager, management. Uh, there is also a workshop education about the, the cyber hygiene and uh, uh, risk awareness and uh, um, let's say different, different, uh, different type of exercises and uh, workshops which were uh, implemented by these, these projects we already have. So, uh, 
about uh, uh, that is uh, that is mostly. I, I just want to add uh, one more thing uh, about the about the the attribution of the attacks, uh, because in in our country we didn't uh, attribute. Uh, uh, attacked li like uh, our colleagues from Albania, and uh, I think that we need to much more improve our capacity in uh, forensic uh, uh, because uh, when you attribute uh, someone, you need to be 100% uh, uh, sure. Uh, we didn't have en enough capacity in our country to uh, make, make uh, appropriate uh, uh, attribution. It's not only capacities. Uh, as you probably know, we have uh, uh, support from the FBI and the support from uh, uh, NS, um, uh, French uh, uh, agency, and they uh, also make a report uh, from the cyber attacks, and we do not have 100% uh, 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 attribution. Uh, and uh, I think that, that when I said that we need to improve our, ca our capacity, we, we need to improve it also in forensic, which is uh, uh, most important. And I believe that we will have opportunity through the, uh, through the uh, new project of Cyber Balkans to also uh, uh, improve uh, capacity for forensic in, in, in our country. Thank so you. I, next time, uh, the, the cyber attacks will happen uh, again, of course, and we would like to have enough knowledge in uh, government cert, in the cyber sec uh, security agency in Montenegro to make attribution. Excellent. Well, um, with this, as not to lose the last committed uh, listeners, I will actually wrap up this panel. I thank you very much and leave the last words to uh, Mr. Hannes Astok, the uh, Executive Director of EGA. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for this uh, excellent panel, Dusan, Igli, Preet, Merle. Thank you for Peter and uh, uh, Maras for keynotes. Thank you very much. And... Uh, uh, just wanted to wrap up that uh, this was about the currently running project cybersecurity rapid response for Albania, Montenegro and Macedonia, but we're just starting um, another project, EU support for six Western Balkans countries for cybersecurity capacity building. So you will hear about uh, Western Balkans and the developments uh, more and more. And most probably already the next good opportunity is in e-governance conference in Estonia in 2024, what will take place 22nd to 23rd of May in Tartu, Estonia. So once again, thank you very much for all presenters, moderators. Uh, thank you for technical stuff and everyone who assisted to make this, uh, this uh, interesting uh, discussion happening. Thank you very much. Session is over. Thank you.